What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Solo Leveling Arise video. Alright guys, we were doing a live stream this morning and I introduced this concept this morning around 10 a.m. Uh, to everybody that was on the live stream, but I promised I would make a separate video about this as well. Plus, I want to kind of touch base a little bit about another video I talked about this morning uh, and just clear some error about things that I'd mentioned. I think some people took it a little bit differently than what was said. Uh, I know sometimes words get a little bit twisted and I want people to understand what I meant and what I was talking about. But first off, this is an important one, early access data. So somebody reached out to the NetMarble GM team to ask about what's going to happen when March 8th happens, like when it drops, what's going to happen with the global server versus the Canadian server, Thai server, are we going to have two different servers, are early access players on one side and globals on the other? Here is what they came back with, a legit answer. Greeting hunters, thank you for contacting Solo Leveling Arise customer service. We understand that you're inquiring about early game access servers. Please note that the game will only have one server after the grand launch. That's right. Hunters from all regions can interact with each other, which means there is no need for your game account to be transferred to a different server. Also, please note the progress made during early access will not be reset. We suggest that you regularly check the forums for updates and announcements about the global release of the game. We hope this information helps you. If you have any further questions or suggestions, please let us know. We'll be happy to assist you. Please refer to the official Discord and forum for the latest news on the game. Sincerely, the Net Marble GM team. So, let's kind of talk about this a little bit because I know that's got a couple of folks concerned, and I and I mean rightfully so. Some people are like, "Oh shit!" So I'm now going to have to deal with uh, everybody from Canada and Thailand, etc. And the answer is, yeah, yeah, you do. So, what does that mean in regards to people's progression? from Canada and Thailand compared to people's progression in global. It's going to be very one-sided. I'm a little bit taken aback by this information, but also not surprised because I've been saying from day one, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep the servers together. I've been saying it for quite some time. If you go back to my first video and people were asking me this question, I was like, nope, we're probably going to only have one server. The reason why I was so confident with that is I've just seen it in other games, but what they had done in the past with those other games that I've seen is that the leaderboards were separated, right? So there was no, there was a way to distinguish between a new player and a veteran player. So let's go to the, I'll show you guys an example, okay? If I go to the ranking boards, right? You guys can see for the normal ranking boards, I'm number 133. The highest player is right here, associated with 658. These are achievements. When a brand new player starts, you're not gonna catch up to that, right? Um, so that's the first thing to note. Um, number two. There's also these achievements, right? These are going to be point events for gate exploration. You guys can see here I'm number one right now. Overall, uh, somebody's playing catch up right now with me. That's fun. Um, and then number two is Battlefield of Time here. You get, uh, get some W, right? Where their overall rank, I'm like number 70. Jeez, I'm horrible at that. But these guys are killing it here, right? So these are all players who probably have very high accounts. Like the, this account is level 40 with Emma Roberts. I mean, that's not a bad account. That's the same, same as my level, essentially. Um, and you've got a lot of people here as well too, like Mr. Best here, who is level 43, same level as me, battle class seven, and I'm like battle class nine, I think, or something. I must be much higher than these guys. I gotta, I just gotta pull my weight a little better. Uh, where's my battle class? Battle class 13, I'm battle class 12, bro, and I'm lower than these guys? I gotta, I gotta step my game on that. But you guys can see what I'm talking about. Like it's, it, these kind of accounts are gonna be way ahead. Um, and that's most likely gonna piss off a lot of global players. now. The way the events are structured, I don't know how much that's going to matter at the end of the day, really, because, I mean, it will matter. If we look at the events real quick, right? You guys can see there's the collector events. These are just completely solo play. They're not going to affect anybody in any way. There's no leaderboard for these. Hunter preview, again, this is just normal. Special dice, there's really no leaderboard here whatsoever. It's just on your own pace again. The gate exploration, yes, there is a leaderboard. This one is for sure. There is a leaderboard here for sure. You guys can see here the ranking rewards are as follows. Uh, overall ranking versus group ranking. So this is my group ranking, by the way. Overall ranking is completely different. So when you see the leaderboard, this right here is the actual overall one, okay? That's important to note that. Um, the Sung Jin Woo growth one, I think, is also just solo. And then probably one of these two will be group one and one solo. So for the most part, the only one that really matters is this one. So from a group ranking perspective, is it going to affect anybody? I mean, not by much. So I don't know if it's really a big deal right now. 
I'm saying right now, we don't know what the rest of the events are going to look like, right? We Even though we have a calendar, I'll show you guys the calendar real quick, just so you guys can kind of get in a general sense of what's coming out. Right, here we go. So gate exploration, hunter training, dungeon. So I think this one will also be group ranked. Uh, artifact growth, hunter growth, I think that's going to be all solo. Hunter training is solo. And so you guys, when you join in global, are going to be doing, looks like, yeah, looks like right here is also another one and another one. So these are these one. I think that's a, that's a dungeon exploration, gate exploration. Those are going to be challenges that are. Or there's a tournament here as well. So I don't know which ones are. Yeah, maybe tournaments are the. You know what? I think this is right. So the tournaments are the 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 leaderboard ones. There you go. That makes sense. Tournaments are leaderboard ones. Challenges are solo ones. So we've got five leaderboard ones. We've got four challenges. So hunter training. That's going to be leveling up your hunters most likely and advancing them, so duping them. Uh, dungeon exploration is probably going in through dungeons and, you know, beating dungeons and getting points for that. And then artifact growth, of course, is you're raising your artifact up, so having artifact points is going to matter quite a bit here. And then hunter training, of course, is the same as this one here where you're going to level up. So you're going to want to save a lot of your tokens for your hunters. Keep a lot of them at level one or whatever, and then use them during these events only and then level them up. So... I mean, yes, there are going to be some definite advantage, some huge advantages, really, for global for, or from Canada and Thailand versus global. So, I really hope they think this through because it could really make a lot of people not want to play this game, especially the competitive type, right? Some people are just going to want to play the game because they love the IP and they want to continue playing that IP as much as possible. But a lot of people are going to be like, "Bro, this is unfair. I don't want to do this." Actually, how much time we have left? Uh, and and we'll. You know, we'll, we'll probably not even. Maybe they will try the game, but if they realize that everything is all in one server, they may leave. Right? That's a big. That's a big part of your player base that may not stick around because of that. So, I really, really hope that they uh, they think this one through. Oh, four minutes left. I should really do something about this. Uh, and you know, at least give those players, the new players, a chance to. Uh, rally and you know catch up somehow i don't know if it's like a maybe maybe global will get a catch-up bonus right maybe they'll get something that'll help them you know catch up to all of us in canada and and uh and allow allow them more time to kind of work on their account uh you know give them bonus exp give them bonus gold whatever the case may be right and you know that that'll probably set people off as well too but either way there you guys have it i just want to make sure everybody knew what was going on the fact that everybody will be under one server umbrella uh, and we will all be playing the same game. Um, so hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of either peace of mind. Because I know some people were like, hey, I don't want to play Canada because I don't want to have to... Um I don't want to have to like start over, blah blah blah. Well, now you don't. Now you know you don't have to start over. Some people were all worried about their their spending because they didn't want to spend because of Canada, and they they weren't sure if the the money would transfer over or the account would transfer. Well, now you know it does. Uh, of course, coming down to the last point I wanted to make was my last video when I talked about the package there, the thirty dollar package, right? <clears throat> the one that uh, I'm referring to is exactly the um. The, the pack that gives you 30% more EXP or, and 30% more um, uh, gold. So I mentioned that it's not that expensive to pay $10 a month for a game you actually plan to play. Okay, But I also said in that same breath that it's a shitty tactic by the company to make more money. But clearly they have to make more money. But nowhere in there that I, that I want people to think I'm promoting spending. I did not say that. I said... If you can't afford it, don't do it. Just be patient. Those were my literally my exact words. So I want people to understand that this, this pack here is not a necessity. This is a solo game. You're not competing against anybody unless you're on those leaderboards. And by then, those leaderboards are going to be dominated by whales anyway. So like for free-to-play players, just enjoy the game for what it is and have a good time. Like that's, and if you don't care about, if you don't want to pay $10 a month, then don't. Really, it's not skin off of anybody's back, including your own. Right? You just got to learn to be patient and take it in strides and just know that the game is a ton of fun even as a free-to-play player. I plan to make a free-to-play account very soon again. I'm going to start over uh, and just try to use only SR weapons and SR characters to see how far I can get. And then if I have to switch over to SSR, I will. Um, but I plan to do all that and I plan to make a challenge account. So um, I just want you guys to just take that information as you, as you said. I, you know, As I said, and, and if you don't want to pay, don't. No, I'm not, I'm not coercing anybody to pay. To me, ten dollars a month is nothing for a game I enjoy for more than thirty hours a month. That's that's chump change to me. Uh, to some people, though, that might matter a lot, right? 
I, I'm, I mostly play my games free to play. This is one of the only pay to win games I've played. And I said it like a month ago that I was going to make both accounts, pay to win and free to play, because I'm in love with this IP. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a fan of NetMarble's action games. So with that being said, this is Payne. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.